Happy Monday, all you Minties! This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at the Defenders Omnibus Volume 1 from Marvel Comics. Let's get started! Alright, before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due out in the direct market on April 7th, and then, of course, a couple of weeks later in the book market. Now, what we're looking at here is one of the direct market covers. Uh, there are two direct market covers. So this is your very first one. On the left-hand side is your other direct market cover. And again, both of these are only available in the direct market. So places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, or your local comic book shop. Now, this is the standard edition cover. On the left hand side this one is available everywhere comic book shops cheap graphic novels amazon barnes and noble wherever you want to get your book it's available everywhere all right let's take a closer look at this so here is the cover to issue number one of the marvel feature number one featuring of course the hulk namor and doctor strange no Silver Surfer, even though most people think Silver Surfer is a big part of the Defenders, which he is. Here is what the spine looks like. Let's hold it up a little more. So, the Defenders, all your creators there, a little image of the characters that appear in the book, and then Volume 1. Something that you're probably noticing right away is how small the font is on the Defenders. Usually on the Silver Age books, they just have the classic Marvel big white font on black but this seems a lot smaller i haven't seen any omnis like this before um and also down here the creators are a little bit harder to read than normal they're usually bigger and they don't usually have as far as the classics like silver age books um, and books like that that it, i've never seen one with um, image on the spine so i'm not sure if that was done artistically on purpose but it just it's a little harder to read Especially when you have it on a shelf amongst other Omnis. Uh, here's what all the books that are collected in here. Here's all the covers. And then what the contents are. The book retails for $100. Let's look at it under the dust jacket. So you have the Defenders logo Omnibus, Volume 1. And even under the dust jacket, the font is small. All of it is, yeah. The font for the creators and the font for the title. But we have an image on the back, which is not very often Marvel puts an image on the back under a, under a Silver Age book. It's usually just a black, blank back. But there you have Nighthawk, Valkyrie, Doctor Strange, and the Hulk. Let's get this open and talk just a little bit about this. All right, let's get this open. I we'll have some black bookend pages, The Defenders. And that's the Squadron Syndicate, I think. The evil version of the Squadron Supreme, the Defenders Omnibus, Volume 1, your creators, and I don't think, yeah, and here's your table of contents. Now, one of the things that you'll see here are the introductions from the original Marvel Masterworks. As far as the afterwards, they're also in here. So you have an introduction for the very first Marvel Masterwork from Roy Thomas. Love reading this stuff. As a matter of fact, that's one of the first things I read, and I've realized that he likes to spoil some things, but I'm okay because I had read all this material before in the Marvel Essential line. As a matter of fact, that's where I started reading the Defenders, like in chronological order. Because for me, I really didn't care about the Defenders. Um, I was all X-Men, and then yes, I started diving into Spider-Man and then the Avengers, but... Unless it was the new Defenders, which had Beast and a couple of other ex-X-Men members. Yeah, I, I wasn't into the Defenders. To me, they were just this little corner of the Marvel Universe growing up that I had no idea about. Um, it wasn't until J.M. DeMatteis' run that I started reading them. And then, later on, I start, I wanted to start uh, reading about the, the team, how they were originally formed, and how the heck Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, Namor, and Hulk got together to begin with. They're so different, these characters. How in the world did all of them come together? Well, back when I got back into comics again in 2002, Marvel um, was releasing this line called the Essential Line, which are these big, thick, black and white phone books. Uh, they're discontinued now, and the least I talk about them, the better, because they weren't built well at all, and they were in black and white. But that was the cheapest way for someone like me to read all these old stories because by the time I came back, the Marvel Masterworks, some of them had been out of print and had shot up in price. So these are available in Marvel Masterworks format. 
However, one of the things I'm going to talk about here is the addition of three books that we made happen because they were not included in the Marvel Masterworks. Um, and I didn't know they weren't because I had the Marvel Essential lines and these were in the Marvel Essentials. So let's talk about the content first. So this includes Submariner 34 through 35, Marvel Features 1, 2, and 3, Giant Size, Defenders 1 and 2, Avengers 116 and 118, um, and then of course material from 115 which sets up the Avengers Defenders War, uh, and then Defenders 1 through 19. Now, that may not seem like all of it because the Marvel or the Marvel Essential line also had some other stories. But because you all spoke up and asked me, I asked uh, Marvel if they could include Doctor Strange 183, Submariner 22, and Incredible Hulk 126, which is the real prototype for the Defenders. And like I said, we're included in the Essentials, but not in the Marvel Masterworks. So Marvel said, sure. So they added them no extra cost so that's really cool those three issues that were not in the marvel masterworks volume one that kind of set up the defenders all written by roy thomas are now included in the omnibus so thanks to you all for reaching out to me and thank you to marvel for adding them um now as far as the story it's pretty basic. I'll, I'll give you a quick little summary without going into spoilers because you all know I really don't talk about spoilers when I do these overviews. But Roy Thomas had no idea that his Doctor Strange comic was going to be canceled. Uh, so he was in the middle of a story. So issue 183 is the last Doctor Strange, well, volume one Doctor Strange issue. So he luckily was able to write that story and continue it into the pages of Submariner. And then that continued into the pages of Incredible Hulk. So he was able to wrap up that storyline. However, he really enjoyed writing these characters that didn't want to form a team but kept coming together. So in a rare case where Stan Lee gave permission to him, he was able to write the Silver Surfer in an issue of Submariner, which also included the Hulk. So now we had the Submariner, Namor, uh, Silver Surfer, and the Hulk teaming up. No Doctor Strange. So in his introduction, he talks about why Stanley was so careful with the use of the Silver Surfer. He didn't let anybody just write it. He wanted to be the only writer to take care of his... This was his pride and joy. He loved the Silver Surfer. So it was a rare case where a writer got to write our Silver Surfer character, and it was Roy Thomas. Now, after this, Roy Thomas and the editors of Marvel really wanted to continue this series. They still didn't know what the team was going to be called. I think it was Stan Lee that came up with the term The Defenders. But what's funny is, at one time, this probably could have been called The Elementals had he been able to use Silver Surfer, Namor, and Hulk, and you throw in the Human Torch. But uh, it was not meant to be. And again, he was not allowed to use the Human Torch, or I'm sorry, Silver Surfer. But Stan Lee did say, hey, but don't forget about the guy whose book was canceled, Doctor Strange. Why don't you use him in a new upcoming book? And so that's where the Marvel feature started, and it featured Doctor Strange. Now, this is pretty interesting because I had no idea about this. I love this is why I love reading the stuff behind the scenes from Roy Thomas. That man's memory is amazing. He still remembers all these feuds. So, there's apparently this feud between Bill Everett, who was a phenomenal anchor creator of uh, The Submariner, and Ross Andrew, who's a great artist. However, Ross Andrew's uh, pencils were apparently really rough, like, he left things to the inker to finish up. And Bill Everett considered that to be lazy. So he literally just inked over every line, not erasing anything. So the the artwork in here is looks so different than Ross Andrews' more polished, finished artwork. And I kind of dig it, honestly. I didn't know that story. I had no idea about that. So I'm, o I'm always uh, interested in stories like that because sometimes you do notice a difference in the art style of a penciler that you're so used to. And depending on the inker, they can either, you know, it's this thing that you say in, the, in art, like the inker can either make or break you. But that is such a funny uh, story behind the scenes. And that led into an ongoing series, by the way. Now in the ongoing series... Roy Thomas was so busy that he couldn't write it, so he gave it to somebody that he thought uh, was kind of new, but at least could meet deadlines, and that is the legendary Steve Englehart. Oh, this is cool. So that's Zemnu right there, the original Hulk, for all those people that follow the monster, Marvel monster. They had to change his name, of course, to Zemnu, or Zemnu because we already had a Hulk. But yes, uh, the original Defenders came back again. With a brand new issue number one, again, written by Steve Englehart, Sal Buscema. 
Big John's little brother, I always wonder if they called him Little Sal, was the penciler on the book. For a while, he's not the only penciler. You'll see other people in here like Gil Kane. Um, but by issue two, it's funny because he gets to write Silver Surfer. So he asked permission from Stan Lee to write Silver Surfer. And Stan Lee was like, yeah, okay. So I'm sure Roy Thomas was like, oh, wait, wait a minute. You told me I couldn't. But he does appear from time to time. It's not like he's a full-fledged member. Not yet. But that's honestly who I thought was the original team. Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, Namor, and the Hulk. And you kind of get that in at the very beginning of all this. But I forgot to mention that in this... Um, Marvel feature book, we're also introduced to this character of Barbara, Barbara Norris. And Barbara Norris becomes an important character later on. As a matter of fact, she becomes an important character as of issue number, f yeah, right here, four, where we're introduced to Valkyrie. And Valkyrie was really an interesting addition to the team, not because she's a woman, but because she had been used before, but it was really the Enchantress under guys, and then she showed up in the pictures or in the pages of the Incredible Hulk. So she had a kind of a little bit of a complicated background, but it turns out that there is a real Valkyrie out there, and here she is, and I'm sure you're very familiar with her, but she is your new team member. So she joins the team as of issue four, honestly. And we get some other team members, we get team members that leave. Um, but so this still feels like when you're reading this, like a team that's held together by something. It's not until Nighthawk shows up. So even Steve um, Englehart ends up leaving the book after the this huge legendary, what he wanted to call the Avengers Defenders War or Avengers Defenders. What did he, what did he want to call it? A clash. He thought war was too big, but. Um, you could tell by his introduction that he was still a little bit bitter about that, that they did not let him call it Avengers Defenders Clash, but it is a war. So after this, after Dormammu and Loki team up, and the Avengers and Defenders get to fight for a lot of issues, not just two issues, so this is really cool. This feels like a modern day story. We have a Namor leaving the team, and then we have a brand new team member. Of this guy right here in his pastel blue colors, Nighthawk, Kyle Richmond joins the team and you know where dr strange kind of played the leader that's kind of what nighthawk does a little bit uh later on and i'm glad that they changed his colors because that is the nighthawk that is more badass oh and there's so many important things that happen within here we have the first appearance of the wrecking crew so i'm sure you're all familiar with the wrecker right from the pages of thor but this is the first time that he teams up with uh thunderball and uh, pile drive all, all these uh, all the wrecking crew first shows up here in the pages of the defenders to fight the defenders another probably one of the most important things that happens in magneto's life happens in the pages of the defenders this leads to him being uh with moira mctaggart later on and that happens in this little it's a two-parter here with alpha the most powerful mutant and what alpha does to magneto and the brotherhood of evil mutants that has an effect on magneto later on so much so that it has an effect on him all the way to the 1991 chris claremont jim lee x-men number one the things that happen in here and i don't want to give that away but for anybody that has read it you already know what i'm talking about and alpha is the big head of mutant like he's got a big bald head that guy team up with the son of satan now, let, yeah, this is the Wrecking Crew storyline I was talking about. Let's look at the back here for extras, because I think I've talked enough about the Defenders. So all the letter pages are found here. I love that about uh, the Omnibus editions, that they keep all the letter pages. So here's a bunch of house ads and original artwork. Beautiful. I wish they had some original pencils before they were touched up by Bill Everett. So this is the Gil Kane. And then there were alterations by John Romita. That's why when I posted this and I said it was Gil Kane, a lot of people said, hey, I think that's John Romita's artwork. Apparently, he had done some alterations. A bunch of trade paperback covers and Marvel premiere. And this amazing standard edition cover that you got to see uh, earlier by Jorge Molina. Now, let's talk about the binding. So here's your eye. The book has 768 pages. Not much of an eye. But honestly, with books like this, there weren't a lot of spread pages back then. So I don't have an issue with that at all. The book lays over. It does its job. And the problem that I had with this, though, are the pages. I don't know if this is, if you can tell, but when you have a white page, you can see the opposite page. Like, so the paper quality is very thin. 
kind of reminds me of the Kurt Busiek uh, Conan omnibus from the same printer, the iMac printer in, in Turkey. And not that big of a deal when it's in color and you're following the pages, but that's something that bothers me when I can see the, uh, the artwork on the opposite page. Um, like right here, it's not a big deal because you can't see anything, but usually if you have it on white, let me show you, like this, you can tell the lettering behind this page. Now, usually in the paper quality that they're using these days, you can tell a little bit, uh, but in this, um, now this is purposely artwork on the back. Don't don't freak out. Uh, but in this, it's just it stood out to me when I was uh, rereading some of the issues in here. But I uh, just wanted to point that out for the people that it bothers. See what I mean? Like you can see the artwork on the opposite page. But um, yeah, that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for you as customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count, the content, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in those comments down below if you've read this material before, if you're picking this up for the very first time, going in blind, if you're a huge fan of Defenders and you've been looking forward to an omnibus all these years, if you're sticking to the epics, if you're sticking to the masterworks, I would love to know all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, please also ask them down there. We can be found on spread shop and on patreon amazing ways to support the channel and right now on our spread shop the link is in the description of the video our items are 15 percent off for the next two weeks and this was the uncanny omar thank you all so much for watching more importantly everyone stay healthy stay safe and much love to you all